In the icy wilderness of Antarctica, abandoned Max is feasting on a hearty meat meal when suddenly, a seal emerges from inside a nearby whale. Startled and frightened, Max roars at the intruder and quickly flees. However, when he turns around, he sees their pack leader, Maya, along with other dogs rushing to his aid. It has been a whole month since these dogs have eaten a single bite. With a sly wink to Maya, Max swiftly moves to the whale carcass's other side and cautiously approaches the seal. Sensing the impending danger, Maya is on high alert and commands the pack to stand guard around Max, waiting for the perfect moment to take action. Max barks and distracts the seal, tearing off a large piece of meat from the whale and making a swift getaway. Enraged by the theft of his food, the seal dives into the icy water and chases after Max. Maya seizes the chance and rallies her pack to the remaining meat at the whale carcass, greedily enjoying the feast. Meanwhile, Max manages to outsmart the seal with his clever trick. Escaping the immediate danger, the seal realizes that he's been fooled, and he hastily rushes back to the pack, gripping Maya's leg with his sharp teeth. Observing the unfolding scene from afar, Max leaps with determination and attacks the seal, fiercely biting him to protect his pack. After a fierce and intense battle, they drive off the ferocious seal. However, Miles sustains severe injuries, knowing that such wounds mean certain death in these extreme conditions. With limited time, Maya limps toward the whale's remains, instructing her fellows to feast upon the remaining fish. It has been 180 days since these sled dogs were abandoned by their owner and the research team in Antarctica, left to fend for themselves. The team faces relentless challenges. They don't know if they will find hope in this frozen wasteland or be left to die. Six months ago, their owner Jerry, an expedition guide, still deeply loved these dogs. As the guardian deity in Antarctica, the sled dog team has upheld the dreams and safety of every scientific research team. One day, a jet steadily lands at the National Science Foundation research base, where Jerry and his sled dog team are. A scientist named David walks out of the plane. He has traveled across the world to Antarctica to look for a meteorite that is believed to be from another planet. At night, the team gathers indoors and discusses the way to Mount Melbourne, where David believes he can find what he wants. Jerry informs the scientist that it will be hazardous to go since it's the beginning of the winter season, and the ice is too thin, making it impossible for the snowmobiles to lead the way. However, David insists, as he refuses to travel all the way here for nothing. Unable to resist his boss's order, Jerry reluctantly agrees to the plan, and his sled dog team will do the job, carrying David to Mount Melbourne. Jerry and David meet outside the following day, where their sled dog team is ready. Jerry instructs David on how to get along well with the dogs. After that, they embark on their journey in the icy and frozen land. The dogs confidently run forward, as this job makes them proud. Sometime later, Jerry calls the group to a stop and changes the formation because ice fields are up ahead. He then asks David to take the brake and run the sled while he walks in front to probe their way. However, all of a sudden, the ice cracks, causing David to fall into the icy cliff, gasping for breath. Luckily, Jerry and the dogs rush to his aid, and they successfully pull him back up. The team continues their trail and soon sees Mount Melbourne just right across from them, which thrilled them. However, Jerry suddenly receives a call from the base, telling him that a major storm is approaching and they should return as soon as possible. Upon hearing it, Jerry quickly packs up their luggage, preparing to safely bring David and his sled team back to the base. However, David is stubborn and again insists that he's just one step closer to obtaining the meteorite. He can't bear losing his self-esteem and dreams, as everyone knows why he's here. Afraid of losing his job, Jerry again yields to David's request. He lines up the dogs for security and then probes the way ahead for David. They use red flags to mark their path in case of getting lost. Fortunately, David soon finds the meteorite he has been dreaming of. The wind starts to blow cruelly, and tragically, David steps into a block of cracking ice when he tries to call the base for weather conditions. He instantly falls to the frozen land and breaks one of his legs. As Jerry tries to help him, Another terrible thing occurs, the frozen ice starts cracking, and the next second, David is thrown under the deadly cold water. Jerry instructs David to hold onto the ice and then quickly puts a rope in Maya's mouth, asking her to approach David slowly. 
The ice is so fragile that it could break easily, which frightened the dog. However, in order to save her beloved human, Maya carefully crawls forward and circles the rope around David's neck. With the assistance of the dog pack, they save David's life. Meanwhile, the base is worried sick about their teammates losing contact but can do nothing as the weather worsens. After non-stop six hours of journey on the road, Jerry and his sled team finally make it back to the base. Everyone is relieved to see them back safely. However, David has been seriously injured and is undergoing hypothermia, whereas Jerry also experiences nerve damage on his fingers due to prolonged exposure to the extreme weather. The group immediately decides to take the plane back to the hospital for further treatment. However, due to the conditions, they are not allowed to bring the sled dogs along and must leave them behind, promising to return later to pick them up. Jerry refuses to leave his dogs alone but is forcefully taken into the plane and left with the rest of the people. Before departing, Jerry lines up the dogs in chains and tells them he will return soon to pick them up. The dogs stand in the crazy wind blowing across the icy land, watching their owner leave, thinking it will be like usual and the man will return soon. A few days later, Jerry wakes up, finding himself in the hospital. Due to the injuries he sustained, he has been in a coma for several days. The first thing Jerry asks about when he opens his eyes is if his sled dog team is safely brought back. However, he's told that people are allowed to enter Antarctica in spring due to the extreme weather. Enraged, Jerry confronts his superior and requests a plane to the field base. But he is bluntly rejected as the man believes that a dog's life is not worthy of rescue when compared to humans. Meanwhile, the sled dog team is chained up and has already been in the snow for four days. Every dog suffers from hunger and gradually loses hope that their owner will return for them. In a state of self-rescue, Max begins striking the collar on his neck hard, and soon he breaks free. The other dogs see it and follow his lead. In the last second, almost every dog escapes. However, surprisingly, even though the dogs break free from the chain, they remain in the same spot, loyally waiting and knowing their owner will return for them. Another few days pass, and hunger continues to strike among the sled team. Just then, Max suddenly becomes excited when he sees a bird not far away, leading the other dogs to run and chase after the bird hastily. As the sled leader, Maya bids farewell to the oldest dog, Jack who is too weak to move an inch and unwilling to leave the place as he believes Jerry will soon be back for him. Maya quickly teams up her sled pack and instructs them on how to catch the birds. Max, excluded by the team, is kept at a distance, watching them catch and enjoy the trophies the other dogs get. On the other hand, Jerry hasn't given up on any chance to return to Antarctica to get his dogs back. He travels to Washington to apply for funds but faces resistance at every turn. He is told that people can only enter Antarctica in spring, which makes him gradually lose hope. As in such extreme weather, there is no way his dogs can survive for long. He then pays a visit to David's house, who is still recovering from his leg injury. Jerry pleads with David for help by showing him the picture they took with the sled dog team before, hoping that David will use his connections with the government to offer assistance. As expected, David refuses and tells him he should just leave the crazy idea behind, as dogs are not considered worthy of a large amount of money and extensive use of labor to be rescued. Left with no choice, Jerry isolates himself from everyone and is forced to return to his motorhome, grieving for his abandoned dogs alone. Time passes in the blink of an eye. The sled dog team has survived on their own in Antarctica for 50 days. Faced with such challenging conditions, the dogs also gradually become despondent as there is barely enough food to feed themselves. With the sudden aurora flashing across the sky, they even mistake it for food and start chasing after it, only to be met with more disappointment. Another tragedy soon strikes. One of the dogs fails to survive due to continuous hunger. Once again, the remaining dogs must bid farewell to their late friend and continue searching for food. They keep walking to the south. And finally, on day 133 of surviving on their own, they reach an abandoned field base where some human snack supplies remain. Every dog gobbles up the food, thinking there might be humans around who can rescue them. But their hope vanishes as everywhere is empty. The dogs don't know that their owner Jerry is also losing hope on the other side of the world.
Jerry begins renting kayaks to young kids while at the same time blaming himself for not being able to do anything and becoming frustrated with himself. One day, his ex-girlfriend, Katie, who was also part of the field base when they were in Antarctica, visits Jerry with a golden retriever. However, Jerry becomes sick and tired of everyone who always tells him to let go of the past and his dogs. Unable to shake off the burden of responsibility, Jerry visits the man who sold him the sled dog team before and apologizes to him for the loss. However, the man tells him not to give up so easily, as he should see how the dogs fought for him before, and now he should fight for them too. The man's words leave a substantial impact on Jerry. He instantly returns to his motorhome and starts packing to return to Antarctica for his beloved dogs alone. Before departing, he attends David's scientific award ceremony to bid farewell. After that, he travels all the way to New Zealand, hoping to rent a boat to enter Antarctica. However, his idea is laughed off and rejected because the ship owner thinks he is being crazy. Once again, Jerry is pushed to a corner, facing a dead end. As he frowns about the situation, Jerry is surprised to find Katie at the same bar. To his astonishment, David and one of his previous teammates also show up. It turns out they've decided to join Jerry for the rescue mission. David finally applied for a fund to Antarctica after seeing his sons painting about the dogs being heroes and saving his father's life. The group then wastes no time and makes their way to Antarctica, but they soon encounter another difficulty as the ice is too thick, and their ship can't move forward when they see their previous base just a few miles away. In a state of urgency, they fly to the nearby Italian field base and take the Lamborghini of Snowcats. At this moment, the dogs have been on their own for 175 days. The whole sled team eventually collapses and no longer carries hope. They all lay down in the snow, lingering in their last breaths and silently waiting for their doomed destiny. After a few days of traveling, Jerry and his group finally arrive at their previous field base, only to find that all the dogs have gone. He digs up the dog chains buried deep in the snow and sees old Jack's lifeless body, much to his dismay. Jerry takes a little moment to grieve for his late dogs but then discovers that the other dogs have escaped. Just then, the group hears the sound of barking from afar. It's Max, along with the other dogs. They've actually survived. Jerry and his sled dog team run toward each other for a tearful reunion. In the end, Jerry surprisingly finds that Maya is still alive with Max's help. He wraps up his beloved dog in his arms, and together they will travel back home after 180 days of a long and seemingly hopeless journey. Faced with a brown bear several times bigger than him, Bach shows no fear and actually scares the bear, causing it to retreat in fear. Bach is a crossbreed dog living in Santa Clara with his master, Judge Miller, and his family. His gentle and vibrant character makes him beloved and spoiled by everyone in the town, and his larger size compared to other dogs makes him even more famous. On Judge Miller's birthday day, Buck follows the housemaid to the market to collect their ingredients. As he chases a cycler through the streets, a man eyes him and plans to abduct and sell him for good money. Back at home, Buck starts his daily duty by waking up the girls, but what he usually does is turn the house upside down. When the maids in the kitchen hear Buck approaching, everyone quickly hides the food in the cabinet, knowing their spoiled dog is soon here for trouble. As a result, Buck is kicked out of the kitchen, unaware that Judge Miller is already waiting behind him ready to pull him out of the house. Sometime later, the lunch table is set in the front yard, and everyone in the family gathers to take a picture. To everyone's dismay, Buck gets to the table before everyone else and ruins the meal. The judge, who has always acceded to all of Buck's wishes, becomes angry and leaves him outside the house. A stormy night ensues, and the man from the market calls Buck toward him by using a treat and then captures him inside a box. The man receives some money and sends Buck in a horse cart. Buck barks and tries to call his master in the house, but it is useless. A while later, he is loaded into a train and taken far away from his hometown. The box is opened the next day by a man. Buck tries to run away, but the man starts beating him to the ground with a club, making him realize that fighting back is not the right way there. He sits down alongside other dogs in the cages, quietly waiting for a chance to escape. However, when he seizes the chance later, he finds himself already in a cold and remote place where it's impossible for him to do anything. They arrive in Skagway, Alaska, a land of nowhere. It's the very first stop many people gather and will set foot in Yukon, northwest Canada, where rumors abound of vast amounts of gold buried beneath the land. Many adventures from all over the world flock to Yukon, hoping to claim their treasure. During the journey, big dogs are essential to sled them through the snowy mountains and carry their luggage. 
It's Buck's first time to see the snow, and this makes him feel sort of scared. Will he survive or not? Buck's fortune takes a turn when he is bought by a male runner named Perot to join a dog sled team delivering mail across the Yukon. Buck meets the other dog in the team, led by an aggressive husky, Spitz. However, all dogs seem not interested in him as Buck tries to make friends with them. Shortly after, Buck embarks on his new journey, as he used to be a spoiled dog in his hometown. He finds it difficult to work with his sled team. When Buck sees a rabbit, he attempts to catch it and goes his own way, eventually leading all dogs, and Perot falls on the snowy ground. His large size and disobedience create a deep hatred among other dogs, but Perot is different, he encourages Buck to get back up and continue. However, the cold soon strikes Buck hard, as he has never been living in such cold weather. He sneaks into the warm tent where his boss is but gets kicked out because dogs should sleep outside. However, Buck is well adapted and soon learns how to sleep in the wild like his other teammates and better cooperate with the team. When they rest for the night, each dog is given a fish to eat. However, Spitz, as the leader, fiercely snaps away one of the weaker dog's food. Upon seeing that, Buck quietly gives the dog his food without making a fuss. The next day, when they cross a frozen lake, everyone is thirsty for water. Unfortunately, Spitz's bossy demeanor prevents any other dogs from daring to move while he drinks water. Sensing the need, Buck, being the biggest dog, quickly cracks the ice using his heavy paws. Every dog is happy except Spitz, who dislikes seeing Buck taking charge and being competent. Buck gradually gets used to his new life in the pack. Doing the work of a sled dog brings him confidence and joy. One day, while his female boss is carefully exploring their way on a frozen lake, suddenly, the ice breaks, and she falls right into the deadly icy water. Buck and Perot run toward her at full speed, but the girl is already taken under the water. Without hesitating, Buck jumps into the water and pulls her out of danger. As the girl is saved, Buck is drowning and soaked under the water because he has used up all his strength. Perot then risks walking on the icy lake, calling out Buck's name, but he gets no response. He tries to break the ice, but it proves useless, as he becomes desperate and thinks he has lost his favorite buddy. Someone passes him a stick to help break the ice. When Perot turns around, he bursts into tears, happy to see his Buck coming back. At night, the female boss tells Buck that Perot has never been on time to haul the mail, but he never gives up hope and believes he can, just like he believes in Buck. She then gives Buck some meat to eat his praise. Later, when everyone is asleep, Buck discovers his favorite pet, a rabbit. Excitedly, he starts chasing after it, causing every dog to awaken and follow his trail. He soon catches the rabbit, but surprisingly, he doesn't eat it but releases it instead. However, before the rabbit can escape, the dog leader, Spitz, rushes before the pack and bites the rabbit to death, showing them who is the leader to follow. Afterward, Spitz shows his sharp-edged fangs, encircling Buck, warning him to be careful or he will be torn apart like the rabbit. As every dog thinks it's a warning, Spitz suddenly attacks Buck, making every dog step back and become frightened. With his gentle and docile nature, Buck initially dodges, unwilling to fight his kind. However, as Spitz delivers a deadly attack, Buck takes a sharp turn, standing his ground for himself, and eventually takes Spitz down. Spitz loses his battle and leaves the pack silently. Perot looks for Spitz the following day and has no clues about what happened the previous night among his sled team. Buck gets up and walks toward the front, ready to be the new leader, but Perot thinks he is not qualified. Even though he is big, the man attempts to let another dog with five years' experience lead the way, but the dog freaks out, as they all know Buck is now their boss. In order not to waste time, Perot reluctantly allows Buck to be the leader. Buck puts on the authorized leader's leash and gets ready. Surprisingly, every dog boasts to his command and runs at full speed, shocking Perot and even other animals on the way. As Perot is happy with Buck's ability, an avalanche ensues from the mountain. Perot orders Buck to turn left, but as a dog with excellent intelligence, Buck takes an unexpected and shocking right turn, leading them into a hidden cave and smoothing their way out, perfectly avoiding the tragedy that could have struck. For the first time, Perot hauls the mail right on time due to Buck's assistance. Everyone in the town is overjoyed to see them, as their hope of life is carried within the sled team. Over time, Buck becomes the star leader of the dog sled team, and he enjoys bringing hope to the townspeople. However, soon, bad news about the telegraph reaching the town soon renders manual mail delivery unnecessary, leaving Buck once again abandoned. Buck and his pack suddenly become hopeless, not knowing where their destiny will lead them ahead. One day, an arrogant man, Al, arrives in the town and buys Buck and his pack. He wants the dogs to carry him to the place where he believes the gold is. However, his carriage is misplaced, making the pack unable to move an inch forward. The man then orders his servant to use a club to hit Buck, which makes him recall the time he was mistreated on the train and become scared. Upon seeing this, 
An old man named John steps forward and asks if Buck still remembers him. It turns out it is the man Buck encountered when he was first brought to Alaska. On that day, Buck came across John's harmonica, which he left behind on the street. He picked it up and returned it to the man. John tries to stop the man from taking the dogs, but he tells him to stay out of his business. The pack soon embarks on their journey with the new master. However, their trial proves very difficult, and all the dogs become exhausted. They attempt to stop because they've sensed the danger ahead. If they continue, everyone might lose their lives. Meanwhile, John grows worried about Buck and his pack when he sees the weather outside about to change. He quickly finds the group, attempting to stop Hal from going on. Buck finally can't take it and falls to the ground, gradually losing consciousness under Hal's threat to kill him. However, Hal persists and takes the rest of the pack to continue their journey, leaving Buck alone with John. Buck is brought back to John's hut and sleeps for two full days until he wakes up again. When he opens his eyes, Buck notices that John is already drunk and asleep. The next day, John tells Buck that he will leave the house for a while, and Buck, himself, can decide whether he wants to stay or leave. Sensing something bizarre about John, Buck follows behind and finds him in a bar, buying alcohol again. Suddenly, Hal bursts in and starts attacking John, blaming him for ruining his journey, as all the dogs have gone, and his gold business has shattered. John is beaten to the ground. Upon seeing that, Buck breaks in and nearly tears Hal into pieces. Buck is pulled away by the customers, but he remains aggressive. John finally calms Buck down, and the owner of the bar finds Hal's carrying a gun, kicking him out of the place immediately. Later, at the hut, John, once again, starts drinking, but Buck snatches it away and buries the bottle in the snow. John catches up to take back his alcohol but soon surrenders as Buck is too big and heavy to be moved. For the first time, John reveals his hidden secret to Buck. He is in Yukon not to dig for gold but to run away from his life since his son passed away. Yukon is a place where John's son dreamt about coming to explore when he was still alive. Now that they have each other, the two decide to finish the journey that John's son had never started. John and Buck set off on their little wooden boat. When night comes, they build a campfire, and for the first time in a long time, Buck is invited to sleep in the tent with John without having to suffer the cold like before. They travel day and night, crossing torrential rivers, and finally arrive at a picturesque mountain that the fairy tales talk about. Buck is thrilled with their newfound place and can't help but explore around. Eventually, they come across a hut where a prospector used to live. John cleans the hut while Buck is busy chasing a squirrel he discovers. Later at night, as they settle to sleep, Buck becomes frightened when he hears some animals howling outside. John explains to him that it's the wolf pack, and they are his ancestors. At this moment, Buck has no idea how life will change for him since he has never lived outside the human world. John and Buck start off their new life in the hut, during their time having fun in the water. Buck sees his favorite rabbit and takes off to chase behind. He chases the rabbit into a deep wood, where he encounters a brown bear, something he has never seen and way bigger than him before. Buck manages to run away from the bear but then comes across a wolf whom he thinks is his same kind. He tries to be friendly, but the wolf ignores him and walks away. Buck looks down and discovers that the wolf's footprint looks similar to his own. The next morning, John wakes up but only finds Buck has already gone. It turns out Buck has grown curious about his wolf pack kind. He sits on a rock watching as the wolves surround the brown bear and start attacking. Suddenly, the pack leader falls into the torrent when he's about to launch his attack. All the wolves start panicking and follow after, but they appear too afraid to move an inch. Buck rushes to rescue the wolf leader with his kind-hearted nature, earning the pack's trust. Since then, he starts joining his wolf pack, gradually releasing his true wild nature. Meanwhile, John seems to lose his life purpose again as he sees the journey has led Buck to his destiny, but he is still drifting aimlessly. Desperate, John begins to drink again, but Buck senses his frustration from afar and returns home to stay by his side. The next morning, John follows Buck to see how he's getting along with his wolf pack and realizes it's time for him to stop running away from life and that he should set Buck free. Buck bids farewell to John and returns to his wolf pack, starting a new life. Meanwhile, danger approaches as Hal actually follows them all the way to the hut. He shoots at John and causes the house to burn. Hearing the gunshot, Buck rushes back bravely fights back against Hal, and throws him into the fire. Seeing John is seriously injured, he tries to save him, but it's already too late, so he stays by his side until his last breath. Eventually, Buck is forever left alone, far away from the human world, but luckily, he still has his wolf pack, and they make him the new leader. Whenever he comes down to the valley in summer, Buck always takes time to remember the kind hands and his own masters. On this day, as Bella is wandering in the wild, she tames a mountain lion and sets off to bring it home for her owner as a gift. She is a legendary dog in her local, 
who was born a stray dog and spent the early part of her life living in an abandoned building with dogs and cats. In this secret shelter, there is no fighting like cats and dogs. Instead, these natural enemies live in harmony. However, one fateful day, animal control officers raid the building, heartlessly snatching away Bella's entire dog family. In a matter of minutes, Bella finds herself alone, unaware that it will be the last time she will see her mother dog. Just as the officers are about to spot Bella, the mother cat swiftly picks her up and hides her, shielding her from harm. From that moment on, the mother cat takes on the role of a mother dog, raising Bella all on her own. As time goes by, Bella grows into a fluffy and healthy dog under the loving care of her feline mother. In Bella's neighborhood, there are two animal lovers named Lucas and Olivia. They love animals, especially stray cats and dogs. Unlike others who caused Bella's family to be separated, Lucas is special. He is kind and caring and visits the demolished building to feed the homeless cats every day. As a result, all stray cats are never afraid of seeing him. On this day, Lucas arrives to feed the stray cats as usual. Bella musters her courage and runs out to meet the couple, and they instantly fall in love with her friendly and energetic nature. Lucas decides to take Bella home, where she becomes a companion for his mother when he's at work. Bella excels at comforting Lucas's mom when she's sad, and she enjoys her new home. Lucas is a good owner who never gets mad at Bella, even when she misbehaves. Often, he takes Bella to the demolished building to reunite with her mother cat. As time goes by, Bella continues to grow bigger and remains happy in her new home, where everything still feels like a playful game to her. One day, when Lucas returns home from work, he discovers a letter from their landlord stating that he will be coming the next day to inspect the faucet. This unexpected notice worries Lucas as there is a strict rule against having a dog in the house. If they are caught, they could face eviction. Lucas and his mom have no choice but to take Bella along to the Veterans Association. He secretly places Bella in a storage room. Bella sees it as a new game but being locked in a room alone. She grows afraid and starts barking for Lucas to come back. Her sound of barking soon echoes through the building, catching the attention of Olivia and one of the other employees. However, instead of reporting Bella to his superior, the man brings her to a group therapy session as a special guest. Everyone at the therapy is thrilled to have Bella around, as her friendly and loving presence provides them incredible comfort. The veterans even find creative ways to hide her from the doctor. As everyone in the building adores her and is willing to bend the rules, Bella thinks it's a fantastic game as well. One day, the couple is walking on their block, and they discover that Bella's old home is being demolished. The cats are in danger. Although Lucas has reported to the rescue organization, the property owner shows no concern. Driven by their love for animals, Lucas and Olivia take a stand and halt the demolition, much to the anger of the property owner. However, they both don't expect the consequences to come this quickly. During the night, an animal control officer shows up at Lucas' doorstep, threatening to take Bella away. Apparently, their neighbor is the one who reports it. To save Bella, Lucas teaches her a game called Go Home so she can run home on her own quickly if she ever finds herself outside and in danger. Bella proves to be an intelligent dog, quickly grasping the rules of the game after just one training session. Later, when Bella isn't enjoying herself in the bedroom, she sees a cheeky squirrel taunting her from outside the window. Bella's excitement soon takes over, and she breaks free from the window, chasing after the squirrel into the street. Lucas takes some time to find her. However, as they prepare to go home, the animal control officer is close behind, swearing to take Bella away. Lucas asks Bella to play the go home, but the dog stands firm right next to her owner, ready to protect him. Unable to escape, Lucas reluctantly allows the officer to take Bella to the pound. Bella becomes sad and scared, doing everything she can to get Lucas back, but nothing works. The following morning, Lucas returns to take Bella home, but the animal control officer warns him that Bella will be put down if she gets caught in the street again. Left with no other choice, Lucas has to temporarily give Bella to Oliva's relatives who live outside the city. Back at home, Lucas and Olivia swiftly gather Bella's belongings, making sure to pack everything she needs. They lovingly prepare her favorite blanket, which carries Lucas's comforting scent, ensuring that she feels secure and at ease during their separation. Meanwhile, as expected, the animal control officer is working for the immoral property owner. Lucas's mom scares the officer, allowing Bella to leave the city. Lucas and Bella share a heartfelt goodbye, although Bella doesn't understand why she's going so far away or why Lucas isn't coming with her. Was it because she didn't play the go-home game when he told her to? Olivia's relatives are kind people who do their best to provide Bella with a sweet home. Bella also tries hard to adapt to her new home, but it's not the same without her real family. She dearly misses Lucas. On this day, Bella seizes an opportunity to jump over the fence and run back home. 
Unbeknownst to Bella, her beloved owner Lucas is already on his way to pick her up. Lucas is relocated to a different town where pit bulls like Bella are welcome and can live without restrictions. She and her owner brush past each other in a twist of fate. Bella then embarks on her long journey back home, filled with uncertainty about whether she can ever make it. Despite facing difficult odds, Bella never gives up. She has never been truly alone before, so surviving in the wild proves to be challenging for her. Hungry and tired, Bella tries to hunt in the forest but fails to catch her prey. Eventually, she arrives in a new town where she finds a new pack of friends who teach her the best places to find food. Getting food from kind-hearted humans is much easier than chasing rabbits. However, as nighttime comes, Bella realizes that each of her friends has a family to stay with, and even though she is invited to join a new family, she chooses to continue her journey. Bella walks day and night with a heavy heart, hoping to reunite with Lucas once again. Unbeknownst to her, her family has tirelessly posted missing notices everywhere, desperately seeking her return. One day, as Bella pauses for a rest in the forest, she suddenly smells blood and tracks it to a mountain lion that hunters killed. Looking at the lion, she mistakes it for a big kitten, the same kind as her mother cat. Nearby, she finds a kitten alone, reminding her of her cat family. Without a second thought, Bella adopts the cub, bearing the responsibility of being a mother. She feeds her and keeps her warm at night. Together, they journey through the wilderness. Bella also learns that in order to survive in the wild, she needs to get food from humans, which is a lot easier than hunting a rabbit. She resorts to stealing meat from barbecues or even from car trunks belonging to humans. Aware of the cub's love for fish, Bella boldly snatches fish away from unsuspecting fishermen. The cub grows as big as Bella, and Bella loves and protects her dearly. But deep down, she still misses Lucas and wonders when they will see each other again. One day, as they are searching for food by the lake, a group of coyotes approach them, waiting for a moment to attack. Seeing this, Bella fights the coyotes bravely just to protect the cub. In a moment of danger, three men approach and chase away the wild animal that threatens them. They find Bella's name and Lucas' contact number on her tag and quickly call Lucas to let him know where she is. However, just as Bella is about to be reunited with Lucas, the cub accidentally scares the men away. With no other choice, Bella and the cub continue their journey, playing new games and creating new experiences. During Bella's second winter, as she and the cub joyfully play their chase and catch game in the snow, they unexpectedly come across another dog. Their excitement and barking inadvertently trigger an avalanche, causing a rush of snow and danger. The dog owner is buried in the snow, but Bella manages to dig him out of it. The man is soon rushed to the hospital, severely injured. Two skiers happen to be there, and they adopt Bella and the new dog. Bella is forced to leave the cub behind and becomes extremely worried about her kitten daughter. She can't stop thinking about her and hopes that she is safe and well. Although her new life is comfortable, with warmth and a full belly every day, Bella still feels something is missing. The skiers eventually take Bella and her new friend back to the dog's owner, who turns out to be a mean old man who doesn't care about the dog. Realizing that her true home is somewhere else, Bella runs away again, but she can't track where the cub is no more. Day by day, Bella grows weary and famished as she continues her relentless journey, walking for long distances without rest. Finally, Bella arrives in a town and finds herself in a supermarket filled with abundant food. Excitedly, she makes a beeline for the meat section, but her actions draw the attention of a man who tries to catch her. Chaos ensues as people join in the chase, creating a commotion throughout the market. Eventually, Bella manages to escape the supermarket with her stolen food. A stray man happens to pass by and adopts her, who may have little but ensures she never goes hungry. The old man loves Bella but unintentionally ends up chaining her and restricting her freedom. After the old man passes away, Bella becomes weak from thirst and hunger. Despite waiting for someone to find her, no one comes. Just when she's losing hope, two kids find her and release her from her chain, allowing her to continue her search for Lucas. Despite facing the daunting threat of coyotes hunting her again in the wild, Bella doesn't lose hope. She bravely attacks, but being outnumbered by the hungry pack, she finds herself surrounded. However, her despair turns to joy when her grown-up cub, now a mountain lion, suddenly joins the fight. Bella's hope is renewed, knowing that if she has found one member of her family, there is still a chance to find Lucas. Excitement fills Bella as she envisions introducing Lucas to her new family and dreams of their life together. Another few months pass, and under her mountain lion's escort, Bella successfully makes it to the border of Denver. Bella invites her to join together, but the mountain lion chooses to wave her goodbye because the forest suits her more. From there, they part away. The forest leads Bella to a busy road where, as a dog, she can only attempt to run across. 
she causes a car accident and gets hit, but she survives and remains determined to reach her destination. Limping with a broken paw, Bella perseveres, finally arriving in front of Lucas's house after two long years. However, upon entering, she realizes that it's no longer the home she remembers and the people there are strangers. Bella is filled with confusion, wondering where Lucas, her mom, and the loved ones she remembers are. The current residents of the house don't recognize her greatness as a dog and call the animal control. Using her intelligence, Bella manages to escape through a window and heads to the place where she believes Lucas might be, the Veterans Association. Things have changed since Bella was last there, with even more dogs helping the veterans. However, Bella's old friends are thrilled to see her and welcome her back home. Most importantly, she is reunited with Lucas, who never forgot about her. However, their joyous reunion is interrupted by a squadron of police cars arriving at the Veterans Association. The animal control officer, calling for backup, intends to take Bella away, threatening her life. Thankfully, the veterans refuse to give up on Bella and stand up for her, reciprocating the help she once provided them. Just when it seems that all hope is lost, Bella is saved on a technicality. As the Veterans Association is federal property, animal control has no jurisdiction there. In the end, Bella finds her way back home where she truly belongs home with the people she loves, Lucas and Olivia. They haven't forgotten her, keeping her favorite blanket and playing her favorite game with her. Outside the house, Vicky is playing happily with her dog, unaware that there is a wolf on the hill watching them attentively. The wolf, in order to protect his cub, entrusts him to the care of this kind-hearted little girl and silently guards their happiness from the hill. No one will ever abandon their own child, including the wolf. However, in this place, humans and wolves are never compatible. It's a sunny, bright day in the forest. A wolf is out looking for food. In the distance, a group of men gets off their cars, carrying guns. They are here to hunt wolves. The father wolf senses the men approaching, hurrying his family and two cubs to escape. However, as the female wolf fiercely stares back at the men, she gets shot and killed right on the spot. The men haven't noticed one of the cubs hiding not far away, witnessing his mother being killed. Meanwhile, Stefan and his daughter Vicky are in the car. He is worried about his daughter and asks if she is okay. However, the girl just keeps quiet and nods in response. They travel far from Paris to this peaceful countryside, hoping to start a new life here. The two arrive at the house where Stefan lived as a kid. As Stefan unboxes their belongings, he sees pictures of his wife and Vicky, which brings him much dismay. He then goes upstairs to check on Vicky, but the little girl sits by her bed with her headset on, looking frustrated. As Stefan opens the window, he tells Vicky that her uncle Thierry has arrived to visit. Vicky rushes outdoors and hugs her uncle. He is the only person that Vicky is happy to see. That night, while Vicky falls asleep on the couch, the two adults begin catching up on some things. Stefan has been blaming himself for being unable to save his late wife and for Vicky's silent protest toward him. Thierry comforts him and leaves the house afterward. The next day, Stefan fixes his car while Vicky remains silent as usual. He wants to take the girl shopping, but Vicky walks away instead. Later, he comes towards the girl and takes off her headset, telling her that he will go out for an adventure on the mountain, and she doesn't have to come along. He grabs his bag and shoes right after, ready to head out. Much to his surprise, he finds Vicky outside, all set. As they hike in the mountains, they stop to rest for a moment. Stefan mentions past memories with his late wife of his place but gets hooked up by sorrow. Vicky still remains silent but gets up to hug her father. Later, as they continue walking, they find themselves lost in the woods. After several moments, they come across an old house with a man standing right there, staring at them. The old man happens to be the owner of the house. He invites the father-daughter duo to his place and offers them water to let them rest for a bit. Vicky is soon attracted to two ponies owned by the old man and goes forward to pet them. She then also notices a puppy sleeping in the barn. She gently pets him as the old man walks in. Vicky asks for the puppy's name, and the man calls him Mystery. Seeing how special Vicky is, he decides to give the puppy to her as a gift. Vicky hides the puppy in her backpack and keeps him a secret, which Stefan hasn't noticed. The old man gives them a ride back to where their car is parked, unaware that the puppy's father is watching them from afar. Upon arriving home, Vicky secretly lets Mystery out of the bag. When Stefan calls her for their night routine, Vicky hides Mystery inside a box and piles up lots of stuffed toys to conceal his presence. At night, the puppy sleeps with Vicky in the same bed. The next morning, Vicky puts him in a basket and hides him in the closet while she leaves home for her first day at the new school. Father and daughter walk towards the school. When a man passes by, Stefan observes him and thinks the stranger looks like a serial killer. Vicky asks her father what a serial killer is, which surprises Stefan a lot as the girl has actually just talked. 
Hearing his daughter talk for the first time after a long while, Stefan makes Vicky repeat her question over and over again. Once the kids enter their classes, Stefan meets a single mother, Anna, whose ex-husband just cheated on her. Anna happens to work in a veterinary clinic. They engage in a little awkward conversation and part ways. The father then calls Thierry and informs him that Vicky has just talked to him, making him overjoyed. In the afternoon, Vicky can't wait to meet her puppy again after school. She quickly runs towards her room, discovering that Mystery actually sneaked out of the closet and chewed and tore all the stuffed toys when she wasn't home. She starts to train Mystery to behave appropriately to be able to stay in the room secretly. Suddenly, Stefan comes upstairs to collect Vicky's dirty clothes for laundry. The puppy smartly hides under the bed without getting caught. However, he soon discovers Mystery's presence when noticing a strange smell from Vicky's clothes. Vicky pleads to keep the puppy, telling her father he needs a family too. Stefan, unable to resist his daughter's request, welcomes Mystery into the family. Mystery is now Vicky's responsibility. Since then, Vicky has taken good care of Mystery. They often go outdoors together to explore nature. She even carves Mystery's name on a tree, marking his presence. Day by day, the puppy grows bigger and stronger, always accompanied by Vicky's side. Stefan also makes a wooden house for their new family member. One day, they bring Mystery to school for Vicky to show him to her classmates. The bell later rings, alerting the students that it's time for school. Vicky leaves her pup with her father. Stefan meets Anna again. She gets curious about Mystery's breed and offers to check on the puppy when she notices his big paws. Stefan waves goodbye to Anna and drives back home with Mystery. They come across a crowd protesting wolves killing their sheep, but he brushes it off. Later, Uncle Thierry visits again, and Stefan is overjoyed. He tells him that Vicky doesn't cry anymore in the middle of the night because the puppy's presence has changed her life. The next day, Stefan comes across Anna again when he does groceries downtown. Upon seeing Mystery again, Anna tells him their dog is not a pet dog but a wolf. She pleads with him to have Mystery checked at the vet clinic. But once again, Stefan brushes it off, thinking that his dog is a confirmed husky. Meanwhile, Vicky is having fun with Mystery. The dog begins howling like a real wolf. From afar, another wolf is watching them. Back home, Stefan calls for his daughter to show her the new doghouse he just made for Mystery. They then notice a strange man in a car, looking around and outside their home. A few minutes later, he drives off. Uncle Thierry revisits them the next day, and together, they all go for a walk in the forest. There, they encounter the wolf that has been watching over them. It's the first time they notice that Mystery looks exactly like a wolf, and the wolf that's been watching over them is Mystery's father, who walks away from them later. After that, they decide to get Mystery checked out at Anna's clinic. It turns out Mystery is a purebred wolf and has to be released back into the wild. But Stefan doesn't want to let the harmless puppy go because Vicky really loves Mystery. He makes a bold decision, building a bigger place for Mystery to stay and for him to be safe before they go to the Halloween party at Vicky's school. However, the same man who was around their house shows up again, asking Stefan if he has seen one wolf nearby. Stefan assures him of seeing nothing, but the man remains suspicious. After the father and daughter leave, he and his friends return to Stefan's property to look around. They find Mystery in a small shed and realize the dog is a wolf. They then call Anna to inform her and also call the police to come along to catch Mystery. Meanwhile, the father wolf senses danger might be approaching, and he risks himself being shot and killed as he rushes downhill to see what has happened. Reaching home, they find the police already standing outside, ready to take Mystery away. Vicky tries to get Mystery back, but to no avail. The people put the wolf puppy inside a cage and drive off. Vicky cries and becomes angry at her father, hating him for letting them take Mystery away. Since that day, Vicky is again sad. She begins to have nightmares and wakes up crying in the middle of the night, shouting to ask her mother not to leave. Stefan tries to calm her down, but nothing can help. Uncle Thierry visits and brings Vicky gifts, but the little girl just leaves the dining table without finishing her meal. Vicky goes to the forest again, lighting candles around the tree where she carved Mystery's name on it before. She misses her beloved puppy a lot. Stefan later takes her to a meeting where the townspeople gather together to discuss the wolf pack. Vicky is upset to find that almost everyone agrees that wolves are dangerous and should be kept away from their homes. Back in their car, Stefan tries to explain to Vicky that wolves are not meant to be pets, but the little girl can't accept the fact and claims she has known long ago that Mystery is a wolf rather than a dog. In school, Vicky excuses herself, saying she needs to use the toilet, but she lies about it and plans to escape the school. As she steps out, she is surprised to see Mystery has actually returned, all grown up, missing her pet so much. She and Mystery walk around until they reach the top of the mountain. Meanwhile, Anna reaches out to Stefan, 
telling him that Mystery escaped a week ago and is probably on the way to look for Vicky. Initially skeptical about what Anna said, Stefan gets a call from Vicky's teacher, saying she has left school with a big dog. Vicky follows Mystery to where the wolf pack, his family, is, but devastated, they find another wolf's dead body killed by humans on the snowy ground, the weather worsens, and heavy snow strikes, resulting in Vicky finally falling sick. Stefan searches all ways in the mountain and eventually sees Mystery, he decides to follow the wolf. Mystery leads him to Vicky in the trees, Stefan finds her restless and shivering from the intense cold, the father then takes Vicky back home, with Mystery guarding them from afar, just like his father used to do. The following day, everyone gathers at the table, asking Vicky what has happened, the girl tells them she is trying to save Mystery from dangerous people, also, she is sure Mystery will return for her no matter what. As expected, Mystery soon returns to look for Vicky during the day. They are so happy to see each other but don't realize that a hunter has already stood by in the distance, ready to shoot Mystery. Mystery gets shot and immediately falls to the ground. The hunter shoots again, almost killing Vicky. Enraged, Stefan punches the hunter in his face and quickly takes Mystery into the house, giving him an operation. Luckily, they get Mystery's wound treated. After everything has happened, Anna finally tells Stefan the good news that she has received authorization for Mystery and his wolf pack to live in the mountains peacefully without worrying about getting shot. The day finally come, Vicky explains to Mystery why she can't live with him anymore and encourages him to return to his wolf family. She is ready to let go of Mystery, she unleashes her wolf dog, watches him disappear, and reunites with his pack. With a segment of a tree root tightly gripped by a rope in his mouth. Yellow struggles desperately in the expansive lake, endeavoring to haul his severely injured owner, Angus, ashore. It has been 20 days since they were cast into the wilderness, battling to survive on their own. Yellow meets Angus for the first time just a month ago. That morning, Angus and his friends are hunting a hare in the woods. The boy successfully catches it, but as he raises his slingshot to end the hare's life, he hesitates and eventually chooses to release it. Yellow, left behind and abandoned, happens to witness the entire incident and instantly recognizes that the boy has a tender heart and can be trusted. The next day, when Angus is out collecting wood, Yellow barks from a distance to grab his attention. Just as he expects, the boy is elated to see him and promptly brings him home. The family congregates to discuss what should be done with the dog. Initially, the boy's father disagrees with keeping Yellow and suggests taking him to a shelter. However, thanks to Angus' persistence, Yellow is allowed to stay but restricted to remaining outside the house. Yellow clings to Angus and insists on being with him at all times and in all places. The next morning, Yellow enthusiastically joins in a game of baseball with the kids. Upon spotting Angus hitting the ball, Yellow eagerly dashes after it, inadvertently colliding with the sheet and causing a commotion. The children struggle to control him, fearing he might tear the sheet. But their efforts prove futile, the damage is already done. Later. Angus ties Yellow to his brother's hand and departs to a location to retrieve a letter. However, as the boy arrives, a fierce dog emerges out of nowhere and terrifies him. Upon hearing the barking, Yellow starts sprinting along the road to save his owner, dragging the little boy along and ultimately causing him to tumble into a puddle of muddy water. With all of Yellow's troubles, Angus's parents begin to worry and consider sending the dog to a shelter. They believe that Angus may not be able to handle the responsibility and that the cost of raising a dog could be too high. Yellow also starts whimpering upon hearing that he might be sent away. However, at the last moment, Angus decides to return his paint for his boat in order to exchange the money for buying food and all the necessities to keep Yellow. Angus uses his limited money to purchase dog food for Yellow, which includes a special offer whistle inside the bag. Back at home, Angus blows the whistle, but to his surprise, Yellow always barks loudly in response. Angus and his father soon get busy building their boat and preparing all outdoor gear because they will set out to Winter Harbor and deliver supplies for the civilian rescues. Angus tells Yellow that they will bring him along as well, which makes the dog excited. Later, Yellow returns home to check on what the mother is up to. He performs all the tricks he knows, ultimately convincing the woman that he's a clever and well-behaved dog. Before their departure, Angus's father gives him a pocket knife that belonged to his grandfather, affirming his belief that his son is ready. The family later transports their gear to the harbor, where their ship is moored. A girl who has a crush on Angus arrives and gives him a box of burnt cookies. They set sail, and Yellow stands on deck to take in the breathtaking views along the way. 
the ship peacefully navigates the vast sea for a couple of days, and the father frequently calls his wife to assure her of their safety. However, on the third day, the sea surface becomes intensely turbulent with large swells, causing everything inside the ship to become topsy-turvy. Angus struggles to fetch water, while Yellow is also jostled from side to side, feeling dizzy. Angus hurries to the hatch to inform his father that he should inspect the boat. The father promptly contacts the guard radio to seek refuge, but the swells capsize the ship before they can react. Not long after, the rescue team arrives at the location where the ship has overturned. They are fortunate to discover Angus's father still alive and promptly transport him to the nearby hospital. The boy's mother receives the news and rushes to the hospital but devastatingly learns that Angus and Yellow are still missing, unsure if they have survived or not. Little does everyone know that Angus and Yellow are washed up onto an isolated coast. Despite their dire situation, Angus reassures Yellow that their father will eventually locate them. Drawing upon the survival skills he's learned from his father, Angus remains composed, sitting on a rock as he assesses the contents of their remaining useful kit. Yellow, however, can't contain his emotions, whimpering and casting tearful glances at Angus as he opens a package of burnt cookies. Angus soon manages to catch a fish and skillfully cooks it to provide a meal for Yellow. Left without proper shelter in the cold, they are compelled to take refuge beneath their boat for the night. The following morning, Yellow assists Angus in digging for food in the sand. However, their efforts yield only a meager amount of sustenance. Despite their hunger, Yellow derives a sense of security from Angus's presence, finding solace in his company. Angus takes several timbers from the boat and constructs a fire rack. This way, if anyone comes near, he can quickly light a fire and call for help. He and Yellow remain in the same spot for five days. Suddenly, he spots a passing jet in the sky. Unfortunately, the plane doesn't spot them, leaving Angus no choice but to take matters into his own hands. After leaving a signal for his father, Angus and Yellow set out southward, hoping to reach a lighthouse. After navigating sharp cliffs for a few days, they reach the shoreline where treacherous swells threaten their safety. Worried about their chances, Angus and Yellow manage to find a somewhat calmer side. Unexpectedly, another plane approaches, prompting them to rush toward the turbulent cliff and shout for the plane to stop. But once again, luck eludes them. Angus succumbs to despair, breaking into tears, and Yellow shares his despondency. The boy's hope wanes as survival seems increasingly improbable. Meanwhile, Angus' family arrives at the scene of the incident, the parents are devastated, as the search team has yet to locate their son despite the passing days. Just as Angus is on the verge of giving up, Yellow barks from a distance, signaling that they should continue onward. They reunite and find comfort in each other's presence. Night falls, accompanied by rain. Seeking refuge, they take cover beneath some leaky wood. However, their shelter is interrupted when a wolf approaches, its fangs bared and eyes filled with menace. Yellow's bark alerts Angus, and without hesitation, he fiercely confronts the wolf, determined to protect his owner. Angus is left alone in the woods, realizing another wolf lurks nearby. Fleeing and calling out for Yellow, he narrowly avoids harm as Yellow rushes back to his aid, saving him just in the nick of time. Yellow deliberately stays awake all night to safeguard Angus while the boy sleeps. Suddenly, he spots a rat approaching the trap they've set up to catch food. Yellow grumbles to wake Angus up, and both are elated to catch the rat, a precious source of sustenance after days of going hungry. Angus roasts the rat meat, but it yields very little flesh. Despite his own hunger, Angus selflessly gives the majority of it to Yellow to ensure the dog's well-being. As they navigate the complex woods, the boys become lost. Angus entrusts Yellow to lead them back home and works on crafting protection pads. Night falls once again and Angus breaks apart the rotten cookies, mixing them with tree leaves to create a meal for both himself and Yellow. Meanwhile, the search team discovers Angus' life jacket, leading his father to believe that his son has reached the shore due to his strong survival skills. The search party arrives at the location and finds the signal Angus left behind. Despite their relentless efforts day and night, the dense forests thwart their search. After 17 days, Angus' father begins to lose hope, Fearing his son's survival chances are dwindling to zero. One morning, Yellow wakes up early in search of food. A crow lands nearby, but Yellow fails to catch it. Left with no other options, Angus collects dead cicadas and worms, mixing them into a makeshift meal for Yellow. Initially hesitant, 
Yellow eventually takes a bite after seeing Angus eat. As they press on, Angus collapses from exhaustion, breaking his arm. They come across a vast lake, and Yellow takes the responsibility of helping Angus swim across. After hours of struggle, they reach another forest. Here, Yellow spots a bobcat feasting on a carcass. Driven by hunger, Yellow attempts to eat, almost getting hurt. Angus intervenes, and they continue on their way. Spotting a building atop a mountain, they muster their remaining strength to reach it, only to find it abandoned. Angus notices a mountain road from a window that could lead them to people. They continue their journey, and Yellow presents Angus with a hare he caught. Though conflicted, Angus recognizes the dire circumstances and proceeds to share in the meal. They encounter a suspended tree bridge, and Angus decides to explore it, but Yellow barks to warn of danger. Angus falls partway, and Yellow manages to rescue him. However, their hope dwindles when they confront treacherous currents ahead. As they brace for their fate, a jet flies by. Yellow's persistent barking attracts the research team's attention, and they quickly rescue Angus. In the chaos, Yellow falls into the current as Angus pleads for his rescue. Heartbroken, Angus is taken away while Yellow is left behind. After days in the hospital, Angus returns home. Burdened by guilt over failing to save Yellow, his parents' efforts to find Yellow are met with rejection from the search team. Overhearing this, Angus realizes he must take matters into his own hands. The family joins forces, posting lost dog signs and searching everywhere for Yellow. They return to the shore, where Angus blows a whistle, hoping to call Yellow back home. Time passes, but Angus remains unwavering in his search for Yellow. One day, as he blows the whistle, a familiar figure emerges from the distance, barking. Just as when they first met, Yellow approaches slowly, waiting for Angus to lead him home. If you like my channel or enjoy watching me dance, please leave a comment in the comment section saying dance. Adam!